Hey YouTube, this is Ruchika again. So this would be my 12th video tutorial on data stage. In my previous video tutorials, I have talked about server jobs, parallel jobs and dealt with the database stages, a few of the database stages in detail. And also my previous video was on about a data set stage in detail, like how to delete using orc admin command and all that stuff. Yeah, so now I'll deal with the sequential file stage. So yeah, sequential file stage is obviously a file stage and it's a passive stage. It's a passive stage because we can't read and write at the same time. We can use only, uh, I mean, we can either read from it or we can write from it. We can't do both at the same time. So it, ca it can have single output link and a reject link too. It's a most important property, important and unique property of sequential file stage among the other file stages. So yeah, this is one of the input important interview questions too. So yeah, does, does a sequential file stage support a reject link? Yes, undoubtedly yes. It does support a rejected link, uh, reject output link. So yep, that's, that's pretty much it. So uh, basically the sequential file stage is used to uh, read I mean used to read like more uh, flat files flat files or delimiter files you say I mean comma or tab or any any delimiter file all such files are uh, basically read with the sequential file stage so whatever uh, whatever we are reading this uh, using the sequential file stage it needs to know how the data is coming right how the data is coming right like the format I mean how what's the format of the data and what's the format of the file and all that so that's the reason they have like format or uh, format or uh, tab on the sequential file stage which is like again unique to this so you can have like multiple and multiple uh, options on formatting options you can have which you really need not worry about I mean as of now I, I'll just deal with the uh, most important ones so yeah because it's it's pretty big stage and we need not really uh, learn about each and every property so yep let's let's go uh, tab by tab so yeah it's pretty much same and every state so i need not explain this and general nothing in there and now coming to the source okay source so file right so basically we need to give the file name or the path name or uh, practically speaking you need to give the job parameter uh, like the parameter of the file, uh, parameter of the patch. So yeah, and you see here, uh, whenever you see like file, this red things, red things are like mandatory. Whenever you don't uh, f uh, um, fill fill out this red red links, let's say if I fill just ex.txt, it doesn't make sense because I didn't give the path. So see, this, this turned to black. So that means that we are good. Otherwise, the job abouts and it says, it can't even compile first it, it doesn't it doesn't go for run it just can't even compile itself so yeah that's how uh, you give your file path uh, and you see here uh, you might uh, did you notice here these all the blue things are just single here but here you could see like uh, there are multiple right this means that whenever you see like multiple things this means that it's a repeatable property we can have like multiple times we can repeat this property multiple times Let's say you have like three files and you want to write three files. You want to read three files. So let's click on file, file. I mean, it's it's up to you. It's, it's, it's up to you. You can have like any number of files, any number of repeatable properties. So, yep, that's how uh, this source thing works. And read, yeah, next is read method. Read method is like specific, specific file, sorry. Specific file. So when you're choosing one file from a path, so that's how, that's when you need to use specific file. There is another thing which is file pattern. File pattern which uh, a file pattern is like the basic criteria which uh, when we need when we need to choose file pattern is when we have like different files but with the same metadata. Different files and same metadata. Just remember it. Different files in the sense. And again, the twist here is, I mean, little uh, condition <laughs> condition here is different files, but they should have uh, the file name uh, pretty much same. Like, uh, let's say you have a C DS practice 
and you have ex, uh, ex, ex1, ex, ex1, ex2, ex3, and all those things. Okay, so when you want to read all these, let's say they have all same metadata. Metadata is let's say they have like only three columns, and those three columns are pretty much same, like serial number, EMP ID, and department number. All these four files have the same column, uh, same columns defined. So that means they have the same metadata. So I, when I'm trying to read these four, it's tiresome to choose always source. I mean, when we go for read a method, we can choose specific file and choose all this, right? But the, to make it easier, what we need to do is sequential file state has a specific thing to do uh, to make it easier. So what does it do is instead of mentioning ex1, ex2, ex3 and all that stuff, so let's see uh, what is what is the common in this. Common is ex, right? So yeah, you can just have ex asterisk dot txt. The extension for all the files is txt. So I'm just making it txt. If the extension is different, it doesn't work. It it only reads with whatever the extension you give, whatever the files which have this extension and uh, starts with this. So yeah, I mean if if you have something in you know, a something uh something something I mean it doesn't really care about what's after ex any file which has an extension txt and starting with uh starting with ex and exists in this path c ds practice is read come I mean, all the all such kind of files are read so that's how uh this file pattern works. I hope uh it's 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 clear. You can you can write uh, you can just uh, create it uh, create like a few files and just check it out yourself and if you have any questions or if it doesn't work just leave me a comment so that I'll uh, make sure I'll create an other another video and show how that works and now coming to the options options tab you have first line in column column names I need not really explain this because the name says it all it's asking do you have uh, the f the file which you are trying to read does it have the column names in its first line or does it not have its column names so by default it's always false whenever you have like uh, whenever you have just the column names in its first line just set it to true that's it and you might be wondering why this is option this is a little weird right because you might you might say that always column names are in the first and then the record comes right no, in the real time, in the real time, it doesn't work that way. Uh, when we deal with real time flat files, there might be, I mean, yeah, there, it's not might, might be, there, there are, some, I mean, there will be some, uh, what do I say, like, there are, there will be some flat files, which can have like header, header records, header records are like something, uh, they just have like their own description kind of thing like this file this file was created by so and so at so and so time and so and so date and all that stuff so those records uh, are called the header files so when those kind of files are being uh, read the first line in column names is we need not change that by default it's false so we not really change that so yeah that's uh, that's how this works and next is uh, Okay, just a moment. Let's take out this reject output link so that we could all the properties here. So now, uh, keep file partitions. Keep file partitions is it's basically asking us. It, it's it's by default it's, it's false. So if you wanna if if you wanna uh, set this to true, it means that we are uh, allowing we are making the data stage to partition the imported data according to the organization of the input file so i mean for example let's say you are reading like four files so you have you will have four different partitions so yeah by default it's always false it, it depends on your requirement and how you read and all that stuff and then now a uh, missing file mode missing file mode you have uh, three options depends error and okay so uh, i mean basically uh, it's asking it's asking what what if i have like what if i ha what if i uh, sorry it's basically asking us to specify what action need to be taken if if any of these file properties uh, i mean does not exist or like error happens and all that stuff so when uh, when we choose error it means that we are asking whenever you see uh, anything missing just uh, just stop the job right there 
and okay it's as it, it's basically saying just keep the file uh, just keep the file you need not really worry about that and do your job and depends means it 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 depends i mean it it, it just dep depends whatever the situation is so data stage uh, by itself choose what situations are there what circumstances and just depends uh, based on that uh, it just gonna <coughs> it just gonna act <coughs> sorry it just gonna act itself so yeah that's how it works and then now reject mode reject mode is continue continue <coughs> sorry continue by default but uh, so what does this mean is i said that that uh, sequential file stage can have a reject link right right so what is asking is what let's say we have specified some criteria over here and it's asking what if if the criteria which should uh, which you mentioned is not me uh, is not met and what do you want the other records which which did not meet the criteria what it's asking what do you want me to do with the other records which we uh, which which are not uh, actually met the criteria so yeah those are the three ones so continue it's it's uh, it's basically we are saying that if a re uh, if just a record it doesn't match just continue uh, continue the operation we are not really worrying about anything just continue the operation we, uh, it means that we are not really bothered about the reject rows so just continue the operation and the fail is if you find if you find or if you have any uh, rejected record so just stop the uh, stop it or just about the job and output is we are saying whenever you see a reject record i gonna collect that so collect to different output so just uh, click on output so when when you have like when you when you are when you want to collect uh, all the rejected records to an output yeah just click on uh, choose this option and yeah whenever you have reject link you must choose this output because it means that you are pulling out the rejected rejected records if you don't select this output the job gonna abort and it says you have a rejected uh, out i mean you have a, a reject link but you didn't choose here reject mode to output so yeah it doesn't make sense right so yeah that's it and the next is report progress report progress is just we are uh, asking data stage i mean it's asking us whether you want to enable reporting or disable reporting by it's, uh, by default it's always yes so yeah that's it basically it, reporting only occurs if the file is like greater than 100 kilobytes and records a fixed length and if and also there should be no filter applied on this file filter filter commands you might be uh, I mean, you might be uh, learning some in Unix, so yeah, cut on all that stuff, said and all that stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much about in this properties tab. And now, uh, okay, let's see. Okay, no, not done. Oh, we have a few of those. Okay, so yep. So let's see. Okay, so these are the these are the mandatory options. These are the options by default. Uh, sequential file stage has them. See if you want to right click and just set to default, everything goes to default. But you can't remove these properties. You need to you need to just leave uh, leave it uh, leave them as such, or you need to change based on your uh, records. And these are the available properties to add. You can have uh, any number of properties added based on your requirement. So yeah, let's see one by one. So file name column, it's basically asking us. It it creates a file name. Uh, it, it creates a new column so what that new column contains is uh, the file path basically it's it, it adds an extra column of type varchar to the output and that column contains the path name of the file which the record is uh, which that particular record is read from so yeah that's uh, just if you want to have like if you want to see the output with the file name of uh, file name path file path name so yeah just click on this and have a and every record has its own uh, file name path depends on the things but 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 the important thing is you whenever i mean if you you are adding it manually right so when you add it manually you need to map it manually even though sometimes even though if rcp or runtime column propagation is enabled 
it doesn't uh, it doesn't forward itself these are not mandatory columns so it doesn't forward it to the next stage you need to choose this and then if you want to have it in an output column yeah you need to choose this and then move forward move forward to the next stage with uh, i mean you need to make it yourself to move forward to the next stage so yeah that's how it works and next is filter filter is it's again it's an optional property so we can specify uh, we can specify this filter to filter out the data obviously uh, we are basically asking a uh, sequential file stage to filter out the data based on the conditions given uh, before passing it to the next stage so yeah you can just have like uh, unix commands like cut or set I i'll try to show you some i'll just make it a small little file and have all these columns so that you'll get a clear idea of what exactly these options look like and the other is uh, read from multiple nodes read from multiple nodes yes or no that's it if you i mean i need not really explain this because it's sequential file stage right so it's always read in sequential mode so but if you want to read uh, if you want to allow individual files to read by several nodes yeah you can just choose from this and say yes and just choose yes so that uh, it, these files are uh, then read by multiple number of nodes obviously if you are reading multiple number of nodes this can improve the performance right so yeah that's it that's it uh, that's pretty much it about this but this stage has i mean this option read from multiple nodes has also dependent property which is number of readers per node number of readers per node it only applies to fixed length records and depends on this property as i said read from multiple nodes property so what does it mean is the file the file which you are reading per node basically it has its own uh, number of readers per node and um, these it's asking if you want like one reader per node or more readers per node so yeah basically you can just think as like a big uh, a big box and you have small boxes inside thing so the big box is node and the small box inside the uh, node is readers so it's asking whether the big box should contain only one small box or you can have like multiple multiple uh, multiple readers per node so yeah you can have uh, you can have like multiple big can it all depends on your project and that so yep that's it and and the other thing is a uh, row number column row number column it basically adds an extra column uh, just like uh, probably uh, i remember it's big into data type i guess so it going to uh, it going to just add to an output column and it contains the row number and as this as the file name column row number column even though rcp is enabled it doesn't uh, move from one stage to another stage without you mapping it okay yeah i mean uh, in in my previous class i explain i mean in previous video tutorial i explained about rcp but yeah i i have seen some people uh, complaining that rcp was not clear so let let me just make it like little clear rcp is runtime column propagation so just derive from that the columns are propagating during runtime you need not specify the metadata just during runtime the columns are propagating themselves to the next stage but but you it's not a good idea to uh, enable rcp every time because sometimes we need to pass all the all the columns from uh, source to target and sometimes we really uh, need not pass need not pull all the source columns right so yeah if you don't want to pass all the source columns it's a waste of time and waste of resources if you choose a uh, run if you check a runtime column propagation so yep that's it and that's row number column uh, basically it gives a row number that's it and the reject reason column reject reason column it's uh, you can have like basically adds another column with a given name to the reject link whatever the name you give you have given to the reject link with that uh, column name it going to create itself and it 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 this can uh, this uh, column contains messages produced by the failed rows like why why this row is failed and all that reject reasoning if you want to know why that record is failed yeah you can just uh, add this thing and the other is schema file you need you literally need not worry about strip bom it's you you'll never never use that so yeah 
let me tell about the schema file schema file basically it contains a record or a draw definition i should say so whenever you have if you remember i said this file pattern should have the same metadata right file pattern whenever you're choosing file pattern all the files in those file pattern should have same metadata but let's say you have several number of files but they don't have metadata and what in what what you need to uh, work on then so that's when you go and choose schema file schema file uh, basically describes each column that will be encountered within the record giving column name and data type uh, i can say it's basically an alternate method of specifying the metadata just in the plain text file uh, schema file basically has its own format of writing uh, writing the records or writing the column names and all that basically how it going to start is uh, just record and then uh, whatever the column name is and then colon and then if it's nullable or not nullable and the data type and the length of the data type so yeah you i mean it's pretty important concept but yeah i can't really explain it uh, clearly you could just uh, try uh, you could just like basically let's learn since these video tutorials are for basic beginners let's learn more about this schema file it's basically uses orchestrate code and the type we need to have orchestrate uh, orchestrate thing so yeah you need to uh, it's a good idea to learn about that but yeah <laughs> i'm not going to explain in this video i'm sorry for that so yeah that's it so and uh, the other thing is if you use schema file rcp must be enabled because i said metadata it's an alternate way of defining metadata right so you don't need if you have schema file you need not really uh, dump your columns here so uh, so yeah if you if you if you don't dump your columns how it move how would it go to the next stage right so yeah that's when you need to choose uh, rcp so that's mandatory if you use schema file so yep that's that's pretty much it about this uh, property step now let's go to the format tab so format tab okay so let's see one other thing so let's see reject and let's say reject is output okay and let's see what's a ds link 19 right see ds link 19 right so let's drop down and see here ds link 19 so what does it say the currently selected link is reject output link and there are no properties can be set so by default you can't set any type of properties but you can have your uh, you can't even have your formats so yeah reject link doesn't have any uh, formatting or anything just just you're writing you're just uh, pulling out the rejected records to your different output that's it and yep now coming to the format i'm not going to explain whole format uh, whole all the options i gonna just uh, have only few uh, few things which i really uh, think uh, are important and i personally have uh, seen people asking these type of questions in uh, sequential file about sequential file stage in interviews so yeah so format tab uh, as i said because data stage need to understand what type of format is your file you need to uh, you need to supply some information about the format of the file right so if you if you do not so that's that's where this format tab gonna have uh, had its own use and by default these are the things you if you don't really uh, change or if you just leave it default what happens is sequential file stage will produce a file which has like a uh, file which has like variable length columns and contains double quotes so each each column has double quote with its record i'll show you output how it look like uh, looks like and all columns are delimited by uh, this delimiter delimiter it's asking uh, the file which you are trying to read is it a comma delimiter or pipe delimiter or whatever the semicolon or colon whatever so when you're trying to read a comma separator file it's going to have del uh, delimiter as comma but when you have pipe so you put just uh, sorry so you just put pipe here sorry sorry for some reason okay yeah so here we go so when we have a pipe delimiter so you specify your delimiter you need to specify your uh, delimiter 
If it's karma, you really need not worry about that because the karma it's set to default. When you click and set to default, uh, no. Okay, let's say. Okay, that's that's pretty much it uh, about that. You not really worry about that. So yeah, just need to specify specify the format, daily meter, karma, and the other uh, other thing is. Uh, uh, basically null field value when you click on this field defaults you see multiple properties to add similar to properties uh, options here like available properties to add so among these I just gonna uh, I just gonna tell you about null field value null field value so what is this null field value and null field separator is this sub property to this so this means that this have a sub property so null field value uh, what happens to uh, what ha what is unique about the sequential file, st file stage is sorry sequential file stage is sequential file stage does not support null values it does not allow uh, it, it can't read null values or it can't write null values that's the biggest and biggest disadvantage and the most most important questions in interviews they're gonna ask uh, we, I mean, can you read null values in sequential file stage? A big no. No, we can't read null values in sequential file stage. But, but we can specify properties and make those null values to be read by the sequential file stage by using these properties, null field value and null uh, separator thing. So let me tell you what this null field value is. It basically uh, allows us to specify the value which is given to a null field. If the source is null, it's asking do what value uh, you want to give if if I see some source uh, null values that's it and null field separator is it's asking uh, specify to is it's asking us to specify separator character in the null field uh, I mean when you click on this it's gonna ask like uh, what are the null field separator values let's say like you you contain like a uh, a comma and a slash I mean comma or a, I mean semicolon and uh, comma then you could use like just have null uh, okay let's say you have a semicolon and comma right so yeah you can have like all the null field separator values let's say like comma and null and this and all that I mean you can just have you can what it's basically meaning is it's allowing us to specify more than one value that the input null field can have so if there are like multiple uh, multiple null va null values null field values in the source this multiple null field values will be separated by the one which you specify here these things so yep that's pretty much about uh, this and the other thing which i gonna tell is delimiter string so delimiter string uh, is uh, it says it's pretty mutual with a delimiter see when I select delimiter string did you observe here the delimiter comma is gone it's it's these two uh, the delimiter and delimiter string are mutually exclusive so yeah when you have one delimiter you're gonna choose you're gonna just uh, choose comma or anything based upon your delimiter but when you have more than one delimiters yeah you can you need to choose delimiter string option and then can specify whatever the delimiters you have let's say like uh, you have comma and a semicolon so yeah this is how you uh, okay, so comma comma and a semicolon so when you specify this comma and semicolon it means that you are saying data stage that i don't have one delimiter i have two delimiters so each i mean each record or each column is separated by these two delimiters so whenever you are reading just pull out these two delimiters uh, and just read the column so that's how it gonna work so that's pretty much about the columns so you're just dumping the columns and advanced tab I explained in the previous video so that's pretty much about this uh, sequential file stage as a source stage okay now let's just uh, learn something about sequential file stage as a target stage okay so just remove uh, these links and just move the sequential file stage and put the data set over here and see okay and see again we have an a reject link 
and can we have more rubbings no and can we have more input links no it doesn't it not if i put some uh, some other data set here and try to pull the data from here it does not accept because it's right it's it's writing to this it can't uh, it can't have multiple output links so yep that's it and when when we use as a source i mean and as a target yeah it's pretty much same file uh, we are just like uh, choosing the path name if you have multiple files you're gonna choose and you're gonna ask to have like you can save it to multiple files and file update mode overwrite if specifies i mean basically this file update mode specifies how the incoming data is written to the files if you have overwrite it, it overwrite it means that it's writing overwriting existing file and append creates a uh, append it basically adds new return data to an already existing file and create error if exists if it if the file doesn't exist it gets created with the new data otherwise it just uh, pops up some error that's it and options we do have a clean up on failure clean up on failure is uh, it, it is allowing us to specify that the stage will delete any partially written files if the stage fails for any reason let's say you have uh, let's say you have some failure and this is pretty useful because let's say you have failure and next time you're writing next time you're writing you're overwriting but if you wanna if, if you have something like append option chosen here and you have true so that means that if the job fails whatever the data is written in an existing file that just like deletes all the partially written files and now it's gonna write it uh, freshly when the job is rerun so yep that's it and if this uh, if this is set to false it means that i i want to have i want to have all those partially written files so, so just don't clean up uh, if the job about just don't clean up that that's it and the first line in column names it's pretty much same as I explained as a source stage and reject mode c continue fail and output so that's pretty much same too and the other is options filter filter yeah you can just specify how the data is filtered uh, from the right i mean from the from this link so yep that's it schema file is again uh, the same scheme same thing which we uh, which i said in the source stage and um, the partitioning partitioning uh, just this and what else format it's pretty much same as this so if you, okay so let's say you have uh, null values in the source and you're trying to read so now you're gonna choose this and say null field value and just give it uh, just give an option so that's it that's pretty much same as the source stage so that's pretty much it, uh, about the sequential file stage and its properties i just told the most important properties i i really i mean it takes a lot of time to explain each and every property but uh, yeah i tried uh best uh, i tried my best to choose uh only important properties which i have come across in my interview questions and i have seen people asking other other uh people too regarding the sequential file stage so yeah that's pretty much it now let's see uh let's create a job using some of these options and see how the data gonna uh write to the uh, stage target stage as a sequential file stage so yeah let's put some source as a sequential and target as a sequential file stage too and let just uh, let's just put from transformer in the middle just the processing stage i'm not th i'm doing nothing in the transformer stage just just putting it and now uh, give all uh, all the things so let me just if i have a f uh, let me just check if i have a file so now uh, let me show you my data so sequential file so yeah so this is this is the header record so this is header and all the all of them like emp number and till 5 team 30 these are the records column names and records and um, this is the trailer record trailer record so yeah so in real time this i mean not exactly this but you have like any number of lines and the header and tail but you want to read only these uh, these records with column names right so just just do that how how the how does how does that work using the sequential file stage so i have a table uh, table definition created sequential file text so now let's get on to this file and this should be parameterized 
but now I'm making it browse and now read specific uh, specific file right because we are just doing it only one and first line in column names no we don't have first line in column names right because we have header and tail records and everything else and just leave it them and file name column let's try some of the properties so file name column you, you want the file uh, path of the file to be displayed okay so let's give uh, just just the column name whatever you want your column name to be so file name okay and let's go to another option and see read first rows read first rows is it's asking how many rows do you want to read we have header trailer and five records with column names right so yeah how many rows uh, you want to read let's say you want to just read three rows okay let's see let's try all the properties so that it would get a clear idea of what is happening and now uh, just row number column two so just row number and what options okay filter filter okay filter is used as i said it's used to filter out the data if you remember the data i have department id 10 20 40 30 and 50 right so if you want to have like only department 20 so yeah you can just like write out the filter condition but as of now in this example let's uh, let's uh, do a filter command so that it will it will remove the head and tail records using unix command okay so the unix command for uh, that is set so yep filter just add filter and write set set is streamline streamline editor i'm sorry streamline editor so 1d 1d means okay let's see uh, how the data looks like without filter so that you will understand what happens with filter okay so just try to view the data so see because we said uh, the first line is not column names right so that is the reason even the column names are being read as the records so if you don't want this to happen so you you want uh, you don't want these uh, e name emp number e name column names in the first record you just want to start uh, from 1 2 3 4 5 so let's uh, let's try to filter out that by using this filter option so filter a series uh, set is streamline editor and 1d 1d is you are asking it to filter out the first uh, first record if you want to filter out like the fifth record uh, just like five uh, dollar uh, dollar d dollar d is like the la last record it's gonna filter out the last record but as of now let let's just do it with uh, like 1d so yeah we had a filter record right so now let's click on this view data and see uh, what happens uh, with this uh, command so see it, it didn't go so you might be wondering why it didn't go because the 1d which we are uh, okay let me just close it so 1d is the header thing so we asked the uh, we asked the data stage to remove the header thing but i want to remove the one which we have the line so that is counted as a second record right so we need to have 2d now 2d so now let's check the data set 2d so we are asking the uh, uh, data stage to filter out uh, to fi just take off the first two rows and start from the uh, third row so i just wanna uh, just filter out the first two rows so yep see now it makes sense right we didn't read the header record and there is nothing else so this is what we are looking for so that's how a uh, filter works so yep that's it so if if you choose filter there are other options are not available so i'm just like removing it okay and yeah so that's how filter and you need not worry about number of readers and all that schema file multiple nodes and all that so yeah that's pretty much uh, let's see what these options are how the output gonna be with these options and the delimiter is pipe delimiter by default it's comma but i just changed it to pipe delimiter because my file if you have seen my file and remember it it's a pipe delimiter file right so yeah so my delimiter is pipe 
so I'm just gonna use a pipe and let's leave just uh, as it is for now and go to the columns and just dump your columns I already did it so dump the columns okay and then I'll click on OK go to the transformer and just remember click and drag because I need all the columns okay and now coming here just give uh, whatever uh, whatever the uh, file is output file you want to write so let's just give Oracle okay I mean just output file so yep update more I want to overwrite because I don't I'm not sure what's in Oracle so I just want to overwrite and clean up on failure yep I do it and do we have first line in column names nope and reject more and all that stuff okay so let's make it okay as of uh, for this let's leave it as such in the next uh, job we're gonna have reject columns too so yep that's it and here delimiter is again pipe you need to change it here pipe and let's leave it as such and columns yep it's already there now just run and see uh, how it gonna have uh, output with the sequential file state so th yeah this is the output of our data so yeah we just didn't choose the partitioning technique so we just uh, have like random records uh, based on the auto partition and we didn't have the first line in column names and the filter uh, filter option so yeah that's that's pretty much uh, about it so but you might be wondering if you have observed here in the source stage we have file name column and row number column too right but these didn't uh, happen to be in the output do you know why because as I said earlier those columns don't propagate themselves to the next stage we need to type it here we need to give them like file name and just like varchar or something you not worry about any other thing and the other thing is row number and these column names should match the one which we given uh, earlier like the column names which we are which we have given just a moment I'll show you so see we have given file a uh, file name column as file name and row number right so those names had to be go uh, has to be go here so that's now let's run and see if we have like those output data with the file number and column name and all that stuff okay so yep it should it should work now it should have uh, the file name and the row number too so now let's see the job is run so let's see the output of this data if let's see whether it has like file name column and row number now so here we go do you know something we didn't give in the transformer stage right we didn't pass them in the transformer I just realized that we didn't pass them uh, we didn't pass the rows in the transformer stage see we didn't pass these two rows to the transformer stage so yep just click on this and just pass this thing now it gonna show us uh, let's run it again because this uh, those columns need to pass through the end point right I mean output stage right so yeah just uh, wait for the see now we have this uh, file name file file name and row number column see so this is how uh, it works so just giving the file path name what what is your path name and all that stuff and just a row number so yep that's pretty much it so yeah you might be wondering why this isn't uh, why this isn't not in the serial order because e EMP name column names are considered as the first and what's the first record our first official record is John 10 right so that is 2 so it just giving based on uh, based on our file uh, text file data so that's pretty much it and if you want to have like reject uh, reject column too you can have like reject column and this pa uh, and they just type on to the uh, just type it here in the source stage so that we did, it will have the reject column just a reject column and choose a reject column here from the options so that when you when you choose a reject row it gonna have uh, reason for rejecting such rows so yep that's pretty much it about this sequential file stage uh, the best thing is you can have your uh, you can have like multiple options used here and you can have like number of uh, other uh, other practice uh, things you can do over here yeah I, I don't want to make it much longer video because yeah processing I want to concentrate more on the processing videos it's just a sequential file stage so 
just just deal with the uh, important things and that's it that's pretty much how we're gonna design so yeah if you have any null field null, null value option yeah so just uh, if you have like any null values in your source and target uh, return and without handling null so just ha just have that null field value option and all that so that gonna work that's it that's pretty much about the sequential file stage guys and in my next video i would deal with uh, probably uh, aggregator stage and then after aggregator i'd go to like copy and i'll just deal with first aggregator then copy and then filter funnel join merge lookup very important and then uh, pivot stage sort and finally the transformer and once we are done with these stages then i gonna uh, deal with uh, some other stages like not important stages like uh, change capture change of plan all those and then uh, column generator column export and development and debug and all those so yep that's pretty much it guys uh, i'll be uploading a uh, aggregator stage pretty soon with an example so yeah you can work on your own with the sequential file stage using any options so thank you guys thank you for watching this video thank you thank you